After a stellar performance in the electrifying Rio de Janeiro fight card, Charles Oliveira has cemented himself as one of the most legendary fighters of all time. His opponent, Matush Gamrot, was a victim of Dubronx's record-breaking 22 wins by submission. After taking down Gamrot early in the second round, Oliveira found himself on the back and maneuvered a rear naked choke, probably one of the worst spots that you could be in against one of the best submission artists of all time. While multiple factors make him seem as unreal as he is on the ground, notably his lifelong jiu-jitsu experience, athleticism, speed, technique, and strength, what truly separates him from all the other black belt martial artists out there black belt. Who give him that? is his near inhuman level of flexibility. Before diving into the biology, it's important to understand exactly why flexibility is as useful as it is in BJJ. Maybe one of the most important reasons is for hip flexibility. Have you ever wondered why certain opponents don't just start wailing on the bottom fighter when they're in guard? It's because the bottom fighter actually holds their legs crossed to prevent them from posturing up. Flexibility in the hips also helps with guard passing game, in other words, how easily you can transition out of top guard and into a more dominant position. You've also likely seen the clip of this one guy, Ryan Hall. He absolutely spams the Iminari rolls, basically a technique to try and get leg locks from a standing position. Those leg locks and other leg holds, like the body triangle for example, become much more effective with flexibility in the knees. Gamron actually seemed like he had flexible shoulders in round 1 when Oliveira was attacking with different shoulder locks, showing yet another reason why flexibility is useful. I'm sure you're starting to get the picture here, so let's explore the science behind his insane flexibility. The fundamental biology that separates Oliveira from your average Joe, you know who's Joe? Who's Joe? is multivaried, meaning there are many things at play. Before continuing, it's important you're familiar with a specific type of tissue that provides the majority of flexibility, connective tissue. This structural tissue, located on the outside of bundles of muscles, serves the primary function of protection and provides pathways for nerves and blood vessels. Specifically, they're composed, among other things, of two primary fibers, collagenous and elastin tissue. Collagenous, deriving from collagen, serves to restrict the flexibility of the muscle fibers, and elastin, as you may have guessed, serves to provide elasticity to the muscles. If you've been following closely, you've likely guessed that Dubronx probably has a higher elastic tissue within his muscles than most people. While that's actually what I was thinking when I started writing the script, it's not entirely accurate. While in theory, increasing elastin fibers would increase the flexibility of the muscles, the reality is that the ratio between collagen and elastin in most people doesn't vary that much, and it's not actually trainable. What matters most and varies between individuals is the distribution of these fibers within the muscle. A phenomenon known as cross-linking, basically the connection between collagen fibers, is responsible for the rigidity of these fiber types. Think of it as that finger trap thing that you might have played when you were younger. The trick to getting your finger out was actually to push inwards and relax your fingers. In a similar way, lengthening your muscles leads to tightening of connective tissue within the muscle. Flexibility is about training your body to cooperate with that tension, basically to let the tissue slide instead of constrict. Oliveira's years on the mat have basically taught his muscles to loosen instead of locking up under strain. Research has actually shown that the majority of flexibility is innate, basically a genetic component that accounts for 47% of the reasoning for observed flexibility. This manifests itself as a structure of the combined joint capsule, basically the surrounding area at the end of bones and ligaments, whose flexibility is not really trainable and serves more as support anyways. In other words, you'd have to just be born in the favelas to compete. Another 41% of flexibility has to do with what we've just discussed, the trainable structure of muscle fibers. Tendons made up around 10%, which are similar to ligaments in the sense that they don't primarily serve flexible roles. Interestingly, the final 2% came from skin and shows the importance of it for really locking in those tight submissions. The muscles themselves don't actually make up the whole story though. Intuitively, you know that your brain has a type of alert system that tells you how much stretch is too far. This system is actually trainable and BJJ specialists like Oliveira have built neural connections that allow them to bypass the acceptable range of motion. The body does this through sensors pre-built in the muscles across the body. Specifically, it uses both muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs to detect a stretch that's gone too far and trigger tension in the muscle. In other words, they make the muscles contract when they sense that they've stretched too far to prevent injury. 
Overall, Oliveira's performance was absolutely phenomenal, and for me, save the main event since the parlay had already been sold by these two buffoons. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it or even learned something new, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to get notified when I next upload. Let me know what you think is next for Dubronx in the division. I certainly thought that today was one of his best performances of his career. Thank you so much and have an awesome day.